harness young people's potential by building their capacities in digital skills to enable them to effectively create awareness on and campaign against these practices while promoting healthy lifestyles. The Kenyan Mimi was launched by His Excellency the President and is spearheaded by the Ministry with the support from developing partner UNFPA. So far, the initiative has successfully has been successful in creating awareness of the role of young girls in the socio-economic and political development in Kenya. With a nationwide reach, the initiative has the potential to change the narrative about young girls and make them the champion of driving the change towards achievement of the Big Four agenda in the country, the Vision 2030, and the Sustainable Development Goals. So the more I travel and I meet the girls and I learn from experts about empowerment, the more I realize that the barriers to educate girls isn't just resources. It is also about attitude. It's also about beliefs and the beliefs that girls simply aren't worth, aren't worth the opportunities that their voices simply shouldn't be heard. And so I encourage every young girl to seek and take advantage of opportunities. And I take, um, and I take, and make sure you take a seat at the table. And there's something that we are always saying, and it's something that we are also launching now, which is Ndoto Halisi, which means your dreams are valid. And as our voices, and we make sure that we are visible enough for people to listen to us and implement what exactly we empowerment. Girls in leadership is something that is growing, is something that needs to be nurtured, but it's something that we as girls need to take opportunity and take a stand and be there no matter how much we know no matter how much we want to participate it is our visibility and our voices that will amplify the need for girls being in leadership in different sectors and as a young leader i'm committed to supporting the agenda of the girl child and of the young women and i look forward to championing this more as we keep going and moving forward thank you that was so empowering and encouraging. I hope you've been encouraged as you've heard that you should stand up for yourself. You should ensure that your voice has been heard. You should take action and go there and fight for your rights as a girl so that you stand equal opportunity as the boys too. So what is your take home message? Have you learned anything from uh, Nadia Hamed? If you have learned anything, please, uh, you can share at the comment section. Tell us if you've learned anything, what message are you taking home? And in case you have any questions for her, you can also uh, ask at the comment section and we are going to take a short break. Young girls joining us from across Africa. I am Amanda Ndisi and I'm absolutely delighted to be here in the presence of Africa's most precious assets. The young leaders of today and tomorrow, the trailblazers and change makers that are shaping up the continent and communities. It's an important opportunity for you all to learn, to share and to inspire each other. The fact that there is so much diversity here today just tells me that you are all in for two days of life-changing and rich conversation. I hope you're all ready to engage deeply with each other and that you have joined with an open mind to allow yourself to listen and learn from your peers. Because no matter how young you are, you all have a story worth sharing. No one story is the same and it's these different life experiences that make you unique and you have the potential to alter and shape your fellow sister's view of the world. So I urge you to freely share your story or your journey because you never know how having the courage to share could broaden and change someone's thinking. No one person is exactly like you. 
Yes, the young girls here may be from Africa, may be the same age, or you may have someone who's born on the exact same day as you. But no matter how similar someone is to you, there is only one you. And you can't be anyone but you. So yes, embrace the similarities with um, you share with your sisters present here over the next couple of days. But always remember to celebrate the things that make you, you. Just never dim your light to find, to find acceptance. And if you feel that you have to shrink yourself to fit in, it's not worth it. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And I just want you to be unapologetic for being who you are. Take up space wherever you are, because wherever you are, you have the right and deserve to be there. According to UNESCO, the Sub-Saharan Africa in particular has the highest rates of education exclusion. According to UIS data, almost 60% of young people between the ages 15 and 17 are not in school. It is also cited that across the region, the African region, 9 million girls between ages about 6 and 11 will never go to school compared to other 6 million boys. The disadvantage, the disadvantage of these girls is that this starts early. And so 23% of the girls are out of school, out of primary school, compared to 19% of the boys. Education is a tool to change the world. And that means that everyone should have education to change the world. If I am to be a minister of education or state president or a state leader who is stem as the president, Working with him at site where I envision a library in Africa, a place where everyone can reach their fullest potential. I, in cordial relationship with my cabinet, will make education absolutely free, but will also create appetite so that everyone can run after. Moreover, I will have a pass into law, free access to sanitary pads and school meals to keep the most needed in school as well. If you ask me, one of the most important value for education, first is it is empower girls to make choices. It is very important to educate the girls because first, uh, after you educate them now, they can set up goals and achieve them. They can say, this is what I want to do and this is how I'm going to do it. In our countries or in our, uh, in our culture, uh, always like we have this idea about the girl is uh, you you will be a woman you will have your own families you will uh, you will have a lot of, uh, of uh, uh, things to do is to raise your children and everything but we never think about her as a human as uh, as a person uh, that she can one day like she can she can speak up she can can make a change in the world. She can do something, uh, do something good for her first. Because actually, here when we are talking about change, we uh, make we can just come and make a change just like that. No, but we always start from our.
Um, I am a U.S. government exchange alumni um, for the YES program. I'm also uh, a Kectel Leadership Fellow uh, and um, also um, a Global Youth Ambassador for their World on Quality Education. Um, I co-founded the um, nonprofit called the End Malaria, which focuses on um, malaria education um, and air education in communities. Uh, and also co-founded the Paths with a Difference program, uh, which is a program that um, provides reusable paths to young girls um, in Nigerian communities. Um, my leadership experience started way back in um, 2012 when I joined the U.S. exchange program, the YES program. Um, and, and it was a, quite a, an, a, an inspiring and a challenging journey for me because it actually um, challenged my mindset and it changed my attitudes towards um, promoting a global cultural activities on many pressing global issues. And by the end of my program, I had over um, 100 hours of community service in my host communities, which uh, I, get, uh, I got a, a certificate for. Um, the program also exposed me to incredibly diverse people around the world who inspired me to keep an open mind, um, create an opinion, based on personal experience rather than um, stereotypes and develop a global mindset. Um, so you could say my inspiration for leadership came uh, right after that program. And um, so I became aware of what was happening around me in my communities. And um, so it made me passionate about driving change in my community. And it taught me to surround myself with the right people and like by the right people, I mean people that will challenge you to go out of your comfort zone, to do things that would bring about a difference, not just in your own personal life, but with people around you and you impact them positively. So um, in 2013, I got invited to the um, Global Youth Conference where we went, underwent um, leadership trainings. And in uh, 2014, I attended the Transformational Leadership Training in Morocco. Uh, and in 2018, I joined the Capital Leadership Program, which was a, which is a year uh, leadership training for youths from different countries. And uh, so, uh, my experiences over the years actually helped me to empower my mind and embrace values such as self worth. And um, uh, I noticed that I express myself very interact with different kind of people from different backgrounds and uh, different countries and also to be very, very open-minded. Um, some of my leadership experiences would be um, with my exchange program, because that is one of the highlights of my entire leadership um, career. So I was the state president for my alumni association in, um, here in Nigeria for a period of um, four years, uh, which um, from there I moved on to be a, a board of trust trustee for the um, program. Currently, I am a national board member for the YES program in Nigeria. Um, and also, uh, Kekto also um, appointed me as a leadership a lead, a regional coordinator for the program here in Nigeria also. So, um, and um, yeah, 2021, we would say has been a challenging year for not just women, but everyone. And um, there have been some highs and lows, and I would say some of the high, some of the lows I've had during my leadership um, experiences would be um, not everyone would do what they said they will, and that's okay. Um, uh, I've learned that some people will not respond to your lead, and uh, it's okay. Just always have um, a backup plan. Uh, it always comes in handy. Um, and there will be moments of self-doubt where you personally would doubt yourself, like it's what I'm doing worth it. But then when you look at the, the impact, the kind of impact you um, put across in people's lives, and uh, I look back at that's enough to like keep me going because some people will challenge you and trust me, there are people that you are actually trying to help, not just people from, the, from other places, people that you're actually trying to help will be there to pose a challenge to you and, and that's okay. Always have a plan to, to, to move ahead of that challenge. Um, sometimes I feel sad about how little I can do to, to help people. But then um, one thing I, I always tell myself is it's always um, quality over quantity. I don't look up at the, about, I don't look at the number of people I've managed to reach out to 
but how much of an impact I've made in some people's life. How much have I impacted this person's life? It means much more to me than um, how many people I've been able to reach out to. Um, so, and um, some of the highs in my leadership uh, experiences is um, um, when I look back at how much I've grown as an individual, not just professionally, on a personal level, or how much I've, I've become so empathic towards people's uh, causes, and so how much open-minded and flexible I've become. Um, I think that is a reward in itself. Um, and the kind of network I've built for myself in my community and in communities outside of my communities whereby I would have a problem and um, I know that I have at least like three people that I would call to be like, hey, this is what is going on here. Is there something we can do about it? So this kind of network makes me really happy and um, it's what keeps me volunteering since 2013. Um, and I, I make sure I volunteer monthly. So I put myself on a schedule that this is what I'm about, this is what I'm going to do this month. And I, I actually do have a calendar for that. So um, it has always kept me in check. That's... Uh, uh, empower my community and a few of my favorite projects would be the parts we've been able to reach out to over a thousand girls um we train them on how to make their own pads we've given them um grant packages where they get packages to um, make their own pads and um currently we are looking um at um, launching a an online program where girls ask on their menstrual or ask questions on their menstrual hygiene and stuff because i think it's a very very important issue that we're overlooking menstrual health is um a very important and it's very there to me another program that i'm very passionate about is the end malaria program where we focus on malaria eradication through education through community education and um, we do that. We educate the communities. Oh, this is what you're doing, and this is why you have mosquitoes in your area, and this is how you can prevent that. And then we do have a different program uh, for um, girl, women, uh, pregnant women, and children, where we provide uh, mosquito nets, uh, drugs, and um, um, free tests for malaria. Uh, another program I do and I'm very proud of is the She Stands Mentorship Program, where we recruit secondary school girls and we um, pair them with mentors, um, uh, where they undergo a leadership training right from the secondary school. That way we instill uh, um, the, the mindset of being a leader in them at such a young age. And um, so far, we, we have um, been in to 25 schools in Taraba State. We're looking to expand. And um, so these are the like three programs that um, are very, I'm very, very passionate and proud to talk about. I do have a lot of other programs too, but um, due to time, I would just mention these three. So um, uh, across the, 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 the years in my work, I've, I've noticed one thing, and it's one thing that I want every young girl to remember is that well, every volunteering opportunity, it actually comes with a reward and a challenge. It comes with a reward. It doesn't have to be a monetary reward. It could be a personal development, a, 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 a new network of people that could help you. Um, it could also be, you know, you know, you've just learned a new skill. You've learned, um, say, public speaking or something. And the challenge could come either from yourself or a team you're working with. So it's, it's up to you to actually decide whether that challenge is going to make or break you. And um, so I am very, very glad to be a part of this conversation. Thank you for making me part of this conversation. And I hope that um, this summit will become like a starting point for so many um, young female leaders because we honestly need a lot of them. Thank you for having me.
what is that one thing that you can remember that the challenge that you could um you would have to overcome sometimes it's not from outside surroundings it's actually from yourself you actually have to find something that you're passionate about what am i passionate about and then you walk towards that always identify a problem in your community so always keep an open mind and always be um willing to go out of your comfort zone because you will be challenged and you would be there are moments where you would feel really uncomfortable and it's up to you to decide whether this is the kind of journey you would like to be on or you would just like to sit down and relax. And for any questions, uh, because I am sure from the give comments about your speech and your project and whatever programs you're running yes so are you open to questions yes i am i am i am open to questions hey so uh back to you the audience if you have any questions any comments you can uh stella pamba says but it's so inspirational you can share any comments, say anything to Munira.
Um, and I want to say good morning or good afternoon where I am. It's good morning. It is 9.20 in the morning, but I hope you're all doing well. Um, I'm here to speak about inspiring girls and like the last lady has just said and mentioned, I have to be chatting off today. Just a bit of a disclaimer, I'm not too experienced, but I will try and tell you the best and I am trying to get into sort of encouraging girls and public speaking. I'm just, a, I'm, I'm a beginner, so just bear with me. Um, so I'm Asya Ali, as you can see down there, I think, and I study computer science. Sorry, my throat is really dry, let me just drink some water. I do study computer science and just, I'm going to tell you why I do computer science. Obviously, I do love computing. I like the math aspect and it's quite unexpected, I would say, in today's age for women to get into, sorry, for women to get into computer science. And as I was writing my personal statement to get into university, I would mention things such as being in a youth hub and public speaking as well as inspiring young girls and the whole I don't know the whole women in tech that was what I based my personal statement on and that is what I feel like is very important to mention especially when you want to get into a field which is specifically STEM so science technology engineering maths especially if you're women I feel like the person looking at the personal statement or looking at your application, these things will sort of stand out to them. So other than the fact that I really do like computing and obviously find a passion in the subject, but it's obviously good to bring in those aspects and those things that you have. Uh, what inspired you to leadership? Uh, funny story, actually. So my auntie she is a i want to say ambassador for onyx which is a youth hub here based it's based here in the uk sorry she obviously she's my auntie and she must have persuaded myself and my sister to join they would have so this onyx youth hub we usually well when it first opened up we would have meetings I think once every week, it was once every week. And then we would literally join, have small conversations, little debates in our free, in our free time. And this was, it was spark, it sparked during the pandemic. So it's almost, what I'm trying to say is that during the pandemic, I did try and occupy myself by doing things that would benefit me and help me gain knowledge and help me obviously educate people. So I feel like I have learned a lot within the Onyx Youth Hub. And I would say that the Onyx, being in the Onyx Youth Hub has inspired me to get into leadership and sort of just share my knowledge with other people, which is what I do enjoy, like I said. Um, the third one is, what are your 2021 leadership experiences and highlights and challenges? Um, I would say I haven't had, I would say that I haven't had any, I know this seems a bit blatant, but I don't, I haven't had any highlights or challenges this year. This has been a very busy year for me, so I wasn't able to get into it as much as I wanted to. However, earlier this year, I did join a Tuazesha training scheme. I think it was in about, I think it was February times. So I'm not too sure. Sorry, I'm not too sure, but we did. So the training, within the training, I'm Jordan sort of IVF and female empowerment, things like that, et cetera. And it was very, very good. I really, really, really did enjoy it. It was so insightful. You, we were able to like discuss with other people within the group. 
it was I really 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 enjoyed it I did um so I would say that was probably my leadership experience because as well as being within the training we were able to become we were able to come up with our own project which was good and I really really did enjoy it um as a young woman leader what impact have you had in your community like I said at the beginning of this interview I'm not too much see I'm a bit of a starter up joined in on a few sorry the most impact I have had <laughs> unfortunately like I said uh, how I've built myself into the how I've built myself with leadership skills and added to my leadership journey again it feels like I'm repeating myself but I would say that the Onyx Youth Hub has definitely definitely helped me with my experience and my journey <laughs> I think that's all I have to say hopefully I'm not ending too early I have four minutes left Thank you for
hello everyone. Has transformed the real life, and uh, yeah, that is my. That those are my inspirations. Uh, they inspire me to help the youth to help them transform, and when they will be successful, they remember that one day maybe I came into their life and they transformed. So, uh, in 2021, I have worked with so many organizations. Uh, at first, I volunteered at. Uh, dispensary back in my village it's called the Mongolia dispensary actually when i was in high school i told myself i'll never work as a doctor but then when i saw this opportunity there there was the hospital there was the doctor but there was nobody to help him like uh implement like and help him in the hospital so i decided because i have a time uh i should go and help him uh, in the pharmacy section and with the time i have learned some of the activities and skills there Yes, so it's it's good to try something new. Don't never say never. So right now I am so I have learned a little bit about the how it goes in the hospital, and I think I I love it has also helped me while educating the girls out there in high school. Sexual uh, education arise globally now and. Opportunity that I'll advise any any youth out there who is a below who is in between the age of 15 years to 17 years go ahead to raise program. Yeah, I am currently a mentor, a high school mentor, basically a youth mentor, because I don't only mentor the high school students. Uh, at first, I going to high school and mentoring the student. It is a journey, I can say, uh, it wasn't easy. It is a journey that hasn't been easy because at first I used to go to high school and uh, the principals, getting, getting opportunities in high school, social events. So I will go to maybe um, a ceremony somewhere and. Uh, Get a youth, just a conversation, trying to throw curiosity.
questions for you Asia and our first question was how do you see your other responsibilities and um, that's a good question I do struggle I do struggle a lot but what I do is I tend to write I write a notepad or there's an app called Notion I don't know if you guys have heard of it you're able to sort of put all of your responsibilities within the, the sort of section. So what you do is you can use Notion, but I do it with the traditional pen and paper way. I just say this week, Monday, I will do this, this, this and that, and write down all of my priorities and just hope throughout the whole of the week I do get through of it, through it, sorry. And I find the satisfaction of just clicking it off as well. So well done, Asia. Well I'm proud of myself. And little as little affirmations like that, they will help you feel better. And that's one way that I feel like I have. Sorry, I can't hear you. I think there's a problem with the mic. I'm seeing that it's not just me. Um, I'm not sure. I speak.
young girls joining us from across Africa. I am Amanda Ndisi and I'm absolutely delighted to be here in the presence of Africa's most precious assets. The young leaders of today and tomorrow, the trailblazers and change makers that are shaping up the continent and communities. It's an important opportunity for you all to learn, to share and to inspire each other. The fact that there is so much diversity here today just tells me that you are all in for two days of life-changing and rich conversation. I hope you're all ready to engage deeply with each other and that you have joined with an open mind to allow yourself to listen and learn from your peers. Because no matter how young you are, you all have a story worth sharing. No one story is the same, and it's these different life experiences that make you unique and you have the potential to alter and shape your fellow sister's view of the world. So I urge you to freely share your story or your journey because you never know how having the courage to share could broaden and change someone's thinking. No one person is exactly like you. Yes, the young girls here may be from Africa, may be the same age, or you may have someone who's born on the exact same day as you. But no matter how similar someone is to you, there is only one you. And you can't be anyone but you. So yes, embrace the similarities with, um, you share with your sisters present here over the next couple of days, but always remember to celebrate the things that make you, you. Just never dim your light to find, to find acceptance. And if you feel that you have to shrink yourself to fit in, it's not worth it. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And I just want you to be unapologetic for being who you are. Take up space wherever you are, because wherever you are, you have the right and deserve to be there. According to UNESCO, the Sub-Saharan Africa in particular has the highest rates of education. Hello, am I edible? Okay, okay, uh, it's the next generation of We are going to take a short health break. 
go and stretch, find something to eat, and we'll be, we'll be back with a very, very, very exciting program for you. Young girls joining us from across Africa. I am Amanda Ndisi and I'm absolutely delighted to be here in the presence of Africa's most precious assets. The young leaders of today and tomorrow, the trailblazers and change makers that are shaping up the continent and communities. It's an important opportunity for you all to learn, to share and to inspire each other. The fact that there is so much diversity here today just tells me that you are all in for two days of life-changing and rich conversation. I hope you are all ready to engage deeply with each other and that you have joined with an open mind to allow yourself to listen and learn from your peers. Because no matter how young you are, you all have a story worth sharing. No one story is the same and it's these different life experiences that make you unique and you have the potential to alter and shape your fellow sister's view of the world. So I urge you to freely share your story or your journey because you never know how having the courage to share could broaden and change someone's thinking. No one person is exactly like you. Yes, the young girls here may be from Africa, may be the same age, or you may have someone who's born on the exact same day as you. But no matter how similar someone is to you, there is only one you. And you can't be anyone but you. So yes, embrace the similarities with, um, you share with your sisters present here over the next couple of days, but always remember to celebrate the things that make you, you. Just never dim your light to find, to find acceptance. And if you feel that you have to shrink yourself to fit in, it's not worth it. You are fearfully and wonderfully made, and I just want you to be unapologetic for being who you are. Take up space wherever you are, because wherever you are, you have the right and deserve to be there. According to UNESCO, the Sub-Saharan Africa in particular has the highest rates of education exclusion. According to UIS data, almost 60% of young people between the ages 15 and 17 are not in school. It is also cited that across the region, the African region, 9 million girls between ages about 6 and 11 will never go to school compared to other 6 million boys. The disadvantage, the disadvantage of these girls is that this starts early. And so 23% of the girls are out of school, out of primary school, compared to 19% of the boys. Education is a tool to change the world. And that means that everyone should have education to change the world. If I'm to be a minister of education or state president or a state leader who is stem as the president, working with him at site where I envision a library in Africa, a place where everyone can reach their fullest potential, I in cordial relationship with my cabinet will make education absolutely free, but will also create appetite so that everyone can run after. Moreover, I will have a pass into law, free access to sanitary pads and school meals to keep the most needed in school as well. If you ask me, one of the most important value for education, first is it is empower girls to make choices. It is very important to educate the girls because first, uh, after you educate them now, they can set up goals and achieve them. They can say, this is what I want to do and this is how I'm going to do it. In our countries or in our, uh, in our culture, uh, always like we have this idea about the girl is uh, you, you will be a woman, you will have your own families, you will, uh, you will have a lot of, uh, of uh, 
uh, things to do is to raise your children and everything but we never think about her as a human as uh, as a person uh, that she can one day like she can she can speak up she can can make a change in the world she can do something uh, do something good for her first because actually here when we are talking about change we uh, make we can just come and make a change just like that no but we always start from ourselves so so this is actually the most uh, thing that can a girl challenge uh, to to finish or to to get access to her education it is certain that some girls lost their parents during the coronavirus outbreak and some have become babies mothers moreover some has reached the point of resolving on giving up on education especially in my country liberia with all those struggles ahead of the resumption of school there is a need for national and international interventions in order to have them succeed this time there is a need for psychosocial counseling, scholarships, meal distribution, and shelter for victims and less fortunate. I think we need to see how best we can help those girls who think they are worth being leaders. Because if we can capture them in molding them for the better, our one Africa will be great. We can nurture uh, girls, African leaders, by making sure that they are at the center of everything. My name is Vicky Aridi, and I'm the youth focal point for the United Nations Joint SDG Fund. And I will be your moderator for today's conversation that's focused on sexual reproductive health and rights with a key focus on menstrual health. So our first panelist is Chantal Umohonza from Rwanda. Could you tell us one thing you would like the world to celebrate about periods today? The period is empowering and should be celebrated positively and happily, and it should be normalized, full stop. What I can say is we are all equal. We are all human beings. There is no more chance to be violated variation of our life rights we as girls we need to stand up and speak our voice and our voice need to be heard uh, information is brought and this should all not only focus on uh, body development how uh, how people change as they grow up it could also focus comprehensive sexual education as a whole. They should also have information, access to products. How can one access the products? Which products are safer? Which ones are better? Which ones one can afford? There should also be dis discussions around um, normalizing menstruation. Uh, so, and that's why I believe these topics should be discussed both between boys and girls and should not only be for girls because that also uh, continues to uh, reinforce the idea that abortion should, I mean, sexual productive health and rights should be a secret and only something that girls can talk about. Yes, so it's everything from mental health. Some girls, uh, due to some stigma attached to menstruation, sometimes they take it as a disease. They take it as something that is not okay for them. So uh, girls need somebody to talk to. Uh, girls need access to products that are really accessible and affordable. And this is also a discussion we need to keep talking about because up to now, I think in almost all African countries, menstrual products are not affordable. They need um, services in terms of mental health. They need, you know, people to talk to among other girls to learn about, to learn, but also unlearn about the myth related to menstruation. We need to like, um, and learn the myth. We need to get information, the correct scientific, uh, correct information to girls when they're still young, even before they start the menstruation period, so that by the time they start, they already know how to go about it. We have to encourage each other um, to have some power to stand, to speak, 
about our violence in our community. We are also able to be in positions of power, like in government structures in our community. So through these structures, because we are there, we have chance to speak to our like different stakeholders about our rights. Yeah, I think overall is to um, invest uh, in uh, production of, of, the, of the menstrual products locally, preferably. There are different um, women-led factories, but also organizations that are locally, uh, that are trying to locally produce some products, but the government needs to support them. And so investing in the locally made products, but also making sure that after they have been made, they can be distributed, uh, they can be available in schools, all the schools and free of charge, almost the same way how governments have invested in a, in a, in a family planning products and sexual reproductive health products, condoms and all that, where you can find that these are available most of the time, so like for example in my country, they are almost free contraception and condoms are almost really free for, for, for everyone. And they are distributed, widely distributed in local health centers and schools and all that. I'd like to call on Chantal to give in just one, one sentence. One sentence, a message to all the girls listening. One sentence. One sentence is stay informed, stay empowered, don't lose your voice. to introduce and invite the participants. So yesterday, after the session, we went to our breakout sessions. And as we have done day one and day two yesterday and today, we are going to still do the same thing just so that all of us who are in different breakout sessions yesterday are able to understand what are some of the learnings that you, and key insights that you are able to gather off of the various, um, the various breakout rooms. Girls talked about ruby cups, which are not very accessible to everyone, and they cost approximately 1,500 Kenyan shillings and can be used for up to 10 years. Uh, another thing that was talked about was disposable pads, which are thrown in pitch latrines and are so, which are so fat and it's hard to maintain hygiene. Not everyone also cannot afford pads, which whose average cost per pack is 50 Kenyan shillings. They are accessible to some girls, but not all. So, one of our participants from, 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 from Tanzania said that a packet of pads goes for 2,000 Tanzanian shillings and it has 10, 10 as in 10 per piece. Wow. Okay, so and then um, some of the participants from Kenya also said that uh, they buy a packet of pads for 120 shillings, which is seven per piece. We also discussed some problems that some uh, girls encounter when buying the product. The, 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 the first and foremost was poverty, which is usually the most rampant, where the girls usually do not have enough money to purchase these products. We talked about how some some of the retail stores or wholesale wholesale stores at such at some areas do not have any products available. So there is an availability of these products, especially in rural areas. So in our group, we discussed about how does not giving access access to menstrual health products affect girls. So like the girls who don't, who are unable to like access menstrual health products, uh, like they don't go to school during their periods due to like some taboo stigma and shame associated with periods. The strategies that we came up with were like, we, we thought that the government should like supply pads to schools so as to achieve menstrual equity. So the main point I got from uh, the meeting was that 
we should educate our girls on alternative menstrual products and make them not only available but also affordable the other thing we learned about is to allow girls to choose what works for them because they know themselves better they know what they want and what works for them best and then i think we looked at is that uh, we should create workshops to educate parents and uh, caregivers on sexual reproductive health rights so that they can understand what the girl needs what the girl is supposed to be provided with uh, to avoid like uh, the imposing and whatsoever and then the lastly we talked about uh, we should ensure that the menstrual materials are av- available even in the rural areas because in the rural areas we don't have these products they're not available ample traditional practices are forms of violence committed primarily against women and girls in specific communities and societies for so long that they are considered or presented by perpetrators as part of accepted cultural practices. I think it's very clear. A few things. Leave no stone unturned. Leave nobody behind. Leave no topic uncovered. So here's a short poem written by a lady called Rupi Kaur, who's a feminist poet, and she answers this question, what's the greatest lesson a woman or a girl should learn? Here's the answer. That since day one, she's already had everything she needs within herself. It's the world that convinced her she did not. So young girls from across Africa, do not forget, do not apologize be bold be courageous own spaces own your power every single girl has inherent power which means you're born with it you don't get it it's not like an application that you download and upload no you have power you're powerful and it is upon you it's upon you and your sister and your and your niece and your deskmate and your best friend it's upon all of you to change the world in your own little tiny way Young girls in my community inspire me to use my voice to stand up for myself. My ideas can be tabled by uh, expressing how I feel. It helps you gain courage, get in a safe space to feel free to express how they feel, where they can openly air out their opinions without fear of judgment or contradiction. Because I have the information and I have the power, then I can fight for what belongs to me and also to feel the own the world by by owning their own voices because it will solve a lot. I would like to invite you to the West Chanawa Africa Summit, which will be happening on December 8th to 10th. You don't want to miss out.
having a voice is important. Young girls in the community inspire me to use my voice, to stand up for myself. My ideas can be tabled by uh, expressing how I feel. It helps you gain courage, get in a safe space, to feel free to express how they feel, where they can openly air out their opinions without fear of judgment or contradiction. Because I have the information and I have the power, then I can fight for what belongs to me. And also to feel the own the world by by owning their own voices because it will solve a lot. I would like to invite you to the West Chanawa Africa Summit, which will be happening on December 8th to 10th. You don't want to miss out. This opportunity to propose the, match, uh, the motion the gender matching leadership. Uh, yes.
this opportunity to propose the March, uh, uh, motion that is gender matter in leadership. Uh, yes, gender does matter in leadership um, because some jobs are gender specific in that uh, a man cannot do a lady job in some areas. For example, um, in the women representative, a man cannot represent women because a man does not understand the challenges women go through. Great leadership is genderless, and that's what I would like to focus on. Each one of us has a big role in leadership in the world, in our towns, in our cities, in each and every single place. And because of this, both men and women have the chance to be great people in the world. Take Nelson Mandela, for example, Wangari Mathai, for example. All these people, both male and female, have the chance to actually become leaders and be great people in the world. So for me, gender doesn't really matter in leadership. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to speak. I'm supporting the motion and saying that yes, gender matters in leadership. If you compare the countries that did spectacularly well during the corona period, you'd find out that there were countries led by women. Example, Taiwan and New Zealand. We compare the death rates in Taiwan and New Zealand to, and New Zealand to a country led by to a country led by a man by a man, let's say Kenya, the, 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 death rate, the death rates in New Zealand were really low than in Kenya. Their medical facilities were very well, were very well prepared and they were really equipped and they sustained themselves during the corona period better than countries led by men. Yes, thank you. Uh, today, I will simply talk about uh, equality. So, I want to promote equality. Sorry. So, so I, I'll be opposing the motion. And our society, we all want to promote equality. I, I guess gender does not matter in leadership. Different countries, let's look at um, Murad, Nadia Murad. She was the first person to, to talk about human track, Obama. He also did equally well in leadership. So, uh, gender does not matter in leadership since we all want to promote equality to all genders so that they can prove what they can do. If the creator wanted one job to be done in just one, they would have created one person. But he didn't. Instead, he created two genders to counter check the fact that one cannot manage to do the other, hence needs the other for support. It's not a matter of one is better than the other. It's a matter of each balance each other out and put them together, you get one crude force that manages to do the work. Which brings me to the first, first point. Leaders vary depending on the sector they lead. Any gender has the capability of leading any, any leadership, anything they want to, they can go for it. But when it comes to specifics, when you're looking for utmost success, these are specific gender that you have tend to go for. For example, if you're going to go for a topic like FGM, if it affects mainly women, would you expect a man to lead it? It doesn't make sense. It will make much more sense if a woman led it, because it, it affects them more and they've gone through the past traumas of it. And if not gone through it, they've seen their ancestors get affected by it. As for man, they've not seen it, they've just seen the effects of it. So they don't really feel the emotional pain to it, they just see the effects. Not really making them less of a leader, just more less capable. The next point would be, it depends on the job. For an example, if you were to, if you were to begin a construction site, would you go for men or for women based off on physique? Just as you were created, men have better physique than women. So when it comes to construction, personally, I would go for men for they would have a better physique to do the job right and do it well. I'm not saying women can't do it, mark my words. All I'm saying is that men would do it better on the fact that they're created to do so. And I see and they're stating and strongly farming, firmly proposing that gender does matter in leadership. So um, I would like to say that men and women have both shown this kind of leadership depending on the environment. So women have the tendency to have to be participatory and collaborative in nature, while men are more authoritative. So depending on the environment of the job, it's going to require different kind of quality. If we're looking at family businesses, women have proved to be more democratic and trans transformative and be sort of role models to others, while men 
have flourished more in like these corporate businesses who adopt the traditional style of leadership that we've seen since time and immemorial. Gender does matter in leadership. Um, if you look at the family setup, a home setup, uh, you'll see that um, a woman and a man have different roles in the family. That is, a man is the head of the family, meaning that a woman can take up the role of a man in the family as long as the man is there. That is very specific because uh, a man is the head of the family. A father, let's say, will be the head of the family. And that's his role in the family. A woman will have a different role. And a man cannot take up the job of a woman in a family. Neither can a woman take up the role of a man in the family as long as they are both still alive. I would like to refer to the points that Randall said about father and mother in the case where both of them are there. Take the United States, for example. In the United States, there are families where the father is a stay-at-home father and the mother goes to work. The mother is the breadwinner. When they get children, the mother will keep going to work and the father will stay at home taking care of the kids and they live peacefully. They'll have no issue with each other. The father will be fine with that because maybe they saw it as best for the mother to keep um, to keep working and for the father during his situation to, to be a stay at home father. So I would like to say in that case, truly, it doesn't really matter about the gender. The gender talked about capability and uh, skill and physique when it comes to construction sites. That's what I would like to focus on. So you said that, I don't deny, men clearly are built for that kind of work. But the thing is, people have immediately made up that mindset that, oh, you want a construction site. You'll immediately look for a man to do that work. But a woman who is determined enough, a woman who actually has a reason enough to go to that construction site and build and carry all those things will actually do it because she has a reason to do it. So. My second point, on opposing that gender matters when it comes to leadership. So one of us has talked about capabilities and when we let's look at the, the model of cars, for example, uh, cars, the seat belts are built to protect men figures. So we see society has already put in that assumption that it's a man supposed to be taking this wheel. So suppose it's a woman, because at this point in today's life, a lot of women are driving and it, times have changed. We need to come out of that traditional mindset and we've literally adopted uh, cultures that have allowed women to do things that they were not previously allowed to. So when it comes to this case where their seat belts are only put for men, they are specifically designed to protect men from the car accident, where does that put a woman? Because already a man has been given that position that they are the person to take on the wheel what about the woman? Right now, women are driving. Are they not taking the wheel? They are. So uh, I see that that gender doesn't really matter when it comes to leadership because previous things that were just only presumed to be specifically set aside for men also been taken up by women and being performed very, very well compared to how that man did it because he's only there because he's a man. Mekatilili's resistance. If you compare her resistance to the resistance of the Nandi, there were more deaths in Nandi, which was being led by a man, than, uh, than death in the Agriyama, which Mekatilili led as a woman. So the question here is, which gender is more capable of doing something? Which gender is more capable of handling the pressure? And which gender is more capable of socializing and feeling and feeling the need of the people and being affectionate with it. Hence, I raised my case that gender matters in leadership. Okay. For me, I think it's about the capability and the ability and not the gender. Because if we compare uh, certain people, and even, okay, let me talk about, um, about Mekatilili, as you've said. Okay, we understand Mekatilili was a lady, but what did she do? She actually did a lot because if you look at her resistance, actually, it was among the, like, the strongest and the ones that took a long period of time that stayed compared to some. 
uh, let's take the Maasai, you know, Dales was just there. So for me, I think gender does not really matter in leadership. It's a matter of instilling the right attitude in people and how you take leadership to be. If you take leadership, if you understand fully like what really leadership means, as Chelsea has said, it's about what you bring on the table, not about gender. So yeah, for me, I oppose the motion and I say that gender does not matter in leadership. Thank you. The first statement um, I'd like to contradict is Lisa, when you say it depends on environment. Um, I would like to use that as a proposition that like you said it depends on the environment, meaning it depends on who is more capable. You see me using that term again, or has the better ability. Back to that term again, to do the work, then to do it right. The idea is not giving out the opportunity, is giving getting the best results out of it. Are we here just to give out opportunities just to get some done results? Or are we here to give out opportunities just to get the best done results? And if that is based off on men, then give it to men. Is that based on women? Give it to women. And if it's based on both, give it to both. I'm not trying to specify, I'm not trying to give a specific particular area. I give construction as an example, which comes to you, Anisa, when I say construction is mostly based on men. That is because of their physique. And that's the reason why it's because they have a better ability. I didn't say men, women can do it. I said everyone could do it. I can, you can, anyone can. It's just, I said, men are built better for the job to do it right, not that women will do it wrong, no. It's just, they'll do it better because they're built that way. Yes, men have a, phys a good physique for construction work, yes. But then when you put, if they're best suited for that role, yes, take them up on that role. That's what you just said, right? Yes, which brings me up to my, argument yet again we are here to look about we're looking at their qualities if they have that quality that matches up to whatever you're looking for in that leadership role then they should they should be given the chance doesn't really matter on whether you're a man whether you're a woman like i earlier spoke about these are just tendencies we are looking at tendencies that people have had leaders like mekatilili when you look at presidents it's because of these tendencies that we're making a judgment to remember that tendencies are just tendencies. And there are many people that go against those tendencies. There are many people that will not abide by the status quo. They will go by their own way because tendencies are just tendencies. And again, we all have different personalities and therefore we can't simply just there's all women are the same, like the very famous term that all men are the same, that we don't agree to, men seem to oppose to that. So we can't simply just base it off of tendencies that a certain gender has. We can just look at an individual person. How about you look at an individual person? Let us not look if they are a man or a woman. Yes, a man's physique, as you've just said, is what is gonna give them that opportunity to perform the construction work better. But who's gonna lead that construction work? When you look at construction, we're not looking at the person who is going to put stones in everything. We can give, yeah, according to your physique, we can select, select some good men because you have to have, even a woman can have very nice physique compared to a man, because again, there are very many determining factors that are gonna lead up to that. So if we look at the person who's gonna lead that construction work, society has already titled construction. We have masculine works, we have feminine works. That's because, that, oh, sorry. that's because gender has been used as this, this sole thing to judge whether you can be suited for that job or another job. So if a woman was to lead that construction site, she's gonna be able to select people to do this and that and that and that. So it's really not even a, a matter of her physique because she's not gonna, the leader, she can participate, but she, she can choose not to. She can choose to lead others direct. She can choose to collaborate or not. It really goes back again to what I just said, that it matters 
on your leadership style, how you are, what you're bringing to the table. So when I look at it on that matter, everyone can be suited for something if you look at it at such a generalized term. But here we are looking at every individual. We want everyone to have equal opportunity, regardless of whether you're a man or a woman. So we can't just generalize things because we are all different. Other panelists? Thank you again for giving me this opportunity. Um, I would like to start off by saying how the society is has been trying to create equality, that men are equal to women, that every time there comes up something in the society and you give it to a man, they ask, why not a woman to do this? If it is a leadership role, they give it to a woman, the man, the men will say, equality, we are all equal, why can't I do this? But the point here is, who does it better? Is it the man or the woman? For example, take the leadership roles in uh, which, Queen, which Queen Elizabeth plays and President Uhuru, with all due respect. Have you seen the development in Britain? She has ruled with a lot of peace and the infrastructure in Britain and England is really, is really nice. The health center, the health facilities, they are really well comprehended. comprehended. But also anyone who's given out a point in, in opposing has given me based off on women against men. It's always women against men. It's been women against men, women against men. What if men are just suited better and you're not willing to accept it? Why is that hard to come to terms with? If men can do it better, let them do it. If women can do it better, let them do it. No one is saying they can't do it. Just let them do it. It gets the work done and gets the work done right. I rest my case. Change your perspective. Don't look at it from the minority because our country is the minority. Most of the majority led by both men and women are doing pretty well for themselves, are doing really, really good. So for me, I don't see how gender matters in leadership. And I would like to bring forth this point. Um, competence is genderless, and it is clearly important in leading a successful companies or businesses. So hence, a leader would first have emotional intelligence to be able to carry out this role. This takes a strong sense of commitment and the greatest um, commitment can only be made by changing the way we think. This is why gender shouldn't matter in leadership at all, because your behavior should be based on what you think. You have to think it before you behave it. So qualities for becoming a great leader can be by anyone, whether male or female. So for me, it depends on the qualities, the skills and all that. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and I'd like to support Anita, about what she said, she's talked about uh, emotional intelligence. You know, uh, in leadership, as she said, we don't have to like think about gender or anything of that sort. What we need to know that is that we are just looking for those super qualities that we want to find in a leader. So um, in something like, you, you see in, uh, in like our society in Kenya, what we are doing is that if a woman tries to become a, the woman so assertive and all that stuff, we all tend to say that she's rude, she's bad, we've all judged her. But if a man does the same thing, again, we, we say that, oh, now that's the leader, that's a tough leader. But as for me, that should not happen at all, simply because as to what uh, Lisa and I think Chelsea have said, we are looking for people or leaders who will show us that we can be better versions of ourselves and all that yeah we can be better versions of ourselves and that those leaders are visionary people they can see as long as a, if a woman thinks about the future and she can see that oh well if i do this it will prosper and all that and also a man can do the same if a man says in kenya but the, i see a female president in the next 20 years and also a woman is like yeah i see a female president, it depends with the qualities that are instilled in the person right from the time of birth. If you instill the right values in a child, I believe that 
the child will grow to become a good leader, whether a man or a woman. So for me, I really oppose this motion and there's no way I will <laughs> propose at any point or support you all. What I want to say is that gender does not matter in leadership at all. It does not matter also. So that's my take, yeah, gender does not matter. Thank you. And first of all, I'd like to, first of all, um, support uh, Janice's point on capabilities. Somebody, I uh, think it was Anita said that, or somebody said that um, women can also do the job. I do not deny that fact, but as Janice said, it's on the physique. It's based on how these people are created, how they're made to be. They're ones who have the strength and better, yeah, better physique to do these kinds of things compared to women. And also, um, uh, somebody mentioned on fathers who stay at home as mothers go to work. I feel like that is under forced circumstances because given an opportunity, a mother would rather be at home with her child than a father staying at home. So that's the mother's role in the family, to take care of the children, to be there for them. And the only time where a man will stay at home and the woman will go to work is if it is under a forced circum circumstance, yeah. And um, that takes me to the point of, somebody said, uh, Anita said that uh, we change the way we think about things, or somebody mentioned we change the way we think about things. Maybe that's a point, sure, but uh, gender matters because you cannot give a man a woman's job. You cannot tell a man, I go back to my first point, you cannot tell a man to represent women. He doesn't understand a thing that's going on in women's life, lives. And if, and if he does, it's only a little bit of it, not as much as a woman would be able to explain herself or explain other women's feelings. And then that will take me to my third point on religion. Uh, gender matters in terms of religion because um, let's take an example of uh, the Muslim uh, religion. Uh, an imam is a man. a man. A woman cannot take up that role. See, that's how things are done in their religion. We cannot change anything about that. Gender matters here because a woman can't be given that role. And the same case applies to the, um, the Catholic Church, where the Pope is a man. Ever since the founding of the Catholic Church, there has never been a woman Pope, because that is how the religion is. That is how they do things. We cannot change that fact. Fact remains fact that a woman can never be a Pope or never be an imam, because that's the way it's been said to be ever since the founding of this religion, ever since the founding of these churches. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Randall. Janice, I saw your hand was up. Uh, thank you for the ability to speak again. Um, I'll start by saying women have evidently proven that they can do what a man can do, if not better. That I stand by. And at the same time, men have proven continuously that they can still do their job, even after facing opposition even after facing hate that why not a woman can do this because the same way you guys look at it in the slightly switch up a perspective think of it in a man's shoes the same way you start asking questions why can't a woman do it towards a man it's the same way a moment a woman comes into position men ask the same questions so which prompts the factor of it depends on the environment as you guys stated the environment does play a key role and key factor like in the rules of britain and usa I'm not saying that if you put a woman leader in the US that they won't succeed well, but I'm just saying it has evidently proven over the years that men have done it evidently well. And in Britain, the, woman, the women have done it very well. The environments are very different. So for you to start looking at them based off on just different genders, it's true, but the environments slightly catered for the factor of their successes in their various ways. For the US, they succeeded. For the Britain, they succeeded. They are both superpower countries. So environment is a key factor that matters, which goes to the point of also capabilities. Capabilities really is a factor and it determines on which side it bases on. If men, again, I say, if men have better shot, give it to them. Don't fight it just because you want equality. We're looking for the job to get done. I'm not against equality. I'm just saying, if they have a better shot at it, give it to them. And if women have a better shot at it, give it to them. And if both combined, since this is not being taken forward, and I'm gonna keep saying it, if both can do the job, 
give it to both. Because when they all do the job, we are all happy. The job is done. You get it all done and everyone gets it done equally. So does gender matter? Yes, but at the same time, so does the environment around it and the capabilities of the individual. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Janice. Anita, the floor is yours. Um, thank you. So I would like to talk about Randall's point and I would like to object. She talked about um, the women representative post. I would like to strongly emphasize that Again, as I said, don't look at the minority, look at the majority. A women representative post is among the minority of the leadership roles that we have in our country. I'm focusing on our country. A women representative roles, if you look at it against governors, chiefs, all that, um, yeah, all, the, all those posts that are there, there are more posts in which both men and women can vie to be leaders than in the women representative post that she's talking about. Again, I would like to talk about the point of mind that she was objecting. She was talking about how the only case in which a father can become a stay-at-home father and a mother has to go to work is under forced circumstances. I strongly, strongly object to that. Because as I said, times are changing. And as times continue to change, we have the men in our society starting to realize that, oh, I can actually try and help my wife around with this while she tries to explore this side of her career. We have cases in which men and women get married and both of them are so focused on what they want to do. Let's say a man has already achieved his goals and dreams. He finds a woman who is strongly um, independent and wants to achieve her dreams. They decide to get together. This woman will get her children but the man being considerate enough will decide to be a stay-at-home father so that this woman that he married or he decided to have children with will go on to achieve her dreams so that these kids or this home situation does not become a hindrance or a way for her or a regret that she didn't achieve her dreams because oh i i did this and this and this and this and this, and this. so yes and then i would like to talk um i would like to bring forth a point um, successful leadership has a lot to do with style because different styles work better in different situations. Knowing your business or role situation and adopting your leadership style to it is the true key to success. So gender doesn't matter whether it's an advantage or an advantage really depends on the environment. Like Jani said, she's um, emphasized the point on environment um, in, the, in England and in the United States that it's dependent on the environment. In the United States, yes, I'm not, I'm not refusing I'm completely. Okay, I'm not, yeah, I'm not objecting your point where they've done well and most of their leaders have been men. But even as you look at it, and I'm not trying to compare men and women here, I'm just saying in the United States, it's clear that women haven't been given that chance to actually prove themselves that they can um, take up that leadership role and show that they can actually do it as well as it is deserved. And same case applies to the United Kingdom and vice versa. So environment, as I said, I don't see how it can be such a big hindrance to proving that both men and women can be leaders. And um, some situations, yes, they can call for more female tendencies and some can call for more male tendencies. The focus in leadership should be in guiding ex executives to understand how the nuances of the culture of the organization impact behavioral expectations of themselves and others. So thank you. So thank you so much, ladies. Um, we've had a wonderful time just listening to all of you together. So thank you so much. And uh, so we will end this. So thank you, Janice. Thank you, Anita, Randall, Patience. I see Chelsea has left the room, but yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, so for participating and giving us so much to think about. Yeah? So thank you and uh, goodbye.
Thank you very much. I hope you can get me. So uh, there's just two points that were actually very disturbing. Um, can you guys hear me? Hello? Yes, yes, Maureen, we can hear you. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Please go on. All right. I just wanted to talk about us letting uh, segregational points into leadership. So the moment we start talking about the roles that uh, the, the male gender has to play in the family and other toxic masculinity myths that come along, we are trying to divide the, the, the basic concept of leadership. Why can it be just be a, a unifying concept in the first place? Why are we bringing in this segregational point? We are letting ourselves down as ladies because once we start to define ourselves based on our capability that a man is best fit for the job, but then what is that? Why can't we talk about leadership in the same way we talk about gender? Thank you very much. From you? Yes, we can hear you, Rachel. Rachel, sorry. Yes, I wanted to voice this out, and I think Maureen has put whatever was in my heart also about this old bit. Let us focus on the leadership aspect of a person and not on the gender perspective of a person. Yes, I am a lady. Yes, I can lead. Yes, he is a man, and he can also lead. So let's not um, break down on a man can do this better than a lady, a lady can do this better than a man. Leadership comes from the heart, and Christians will put it, leadership also comes from God. So if I am a lady and I have the passion of leading, I can lead. If a man has the passion of leading, the man can also lead. Know that the man can fit in this leadership position more than a lady can. Thank you. the chat. Some of you are still commenting there. Let me see what you have to say. Kazanja Christine has sent a whole list of thoughts. Let us hear this. Today's mechanization and more so as we go into the fourth industrial revolution, what sets one apart is the application of EQ and IQ, not might, physique, and other toxic masculinity myths. We also have in the past, women's achievements have been overlooked. We have hidden figures since the stories were written by men. Social media has democratized representation, though more can be done. She has also said when a new maker of model is made, it's usually an improvement of its predecessor. God looked at Adam, man, and decided to make it. You tell me. Wow, this is spiking a whole lot of conversations. Do you really have to speak? Do you want us to hear your voice? Raise your hand. We have masculine, of course. She's saying, I think you just have a fixed mind on this male stuff here. For me, gender doesn't matter. We have Anushka LG. We have evidence that men do it well because we have given them the chance to showcase. Give it to women and then try, to, try them and conclude that they can't do it. Africans live present based on dark, dark history and stereotypes. So Anushka is trying to tell us that we're just saying that women can't do it because we've not given them the spaces. So uh, also Susan Wanjiku is saying gender does not matter. Because if it could, if, because it could matter, many organizations like Team Seed Africa could not be teaching young adolescent girls and women about leadership. Well, we also have Anushka. One of the biggest canker worm is that men have a certain ego which can't let them be. They simply find it so difficult to observe that a woman can be their boss, stay in a company or an organization. That in the mindset and that in the way they have been formatted, be. Consequently, they just become a bone in our flesh for no good reason. 
the moment this mindset switches, Africa will move. Anushka is just telling us that women can do it. We have man can do, a woman can do better. So if you have to raise your hand, please adjust to be a panelist. If you have raised your hand, we are requesting you to adjust to be a panelist so that we can allow you to speak. Some of you have raised your hand, please adjust to be a panelist. We have Alcrin Apondi. The issue here is that people have believed in the stereotypes that are there which becomes a hinder in exploring and taking up these spaces other than that all we have the capability. Now, we are going to hear from Esther and Zambi. Esther, let us hear from you. What do you have to say? That There, we can't hear you. Okay, Martin is ready. it in the perspective of uh, uh, the world that we live in today, because when I was listening to the debate, I was uh, hearing uh, this, this, this lady who was uh, kind of speaking based on what used to happen before, because for the world that we live in today, I think uh, uh, it, it is all based on the, the capability. What capacity do you have, you know, to be able to um, take up the leadership? Because um, for me, I think um, I became a mom at a very tender age of 18. And um, being a mother of two now <laughs> uh, and a single mom, I have been able to take up all the roles that a man could do, and um, I'm playing both the role of being a mom and a dad at the same time. And I'm trying to do all the best that um, I can give to my to my kids, that even their, if their dad was there, he could have done it. And if we look at the... able to do that which she did. So um, may we be able to look at the mindset of what is the what capacity do I have? If I have all that it takes, then I think I am good to go. Thank you very much, Marlene, for that wonderful insight. I'd like also to read a comment from Rachel Ansari. She said, gender doesn't matter for sure. Leadership is for promoting general well-being of the society at large. If women of men start playing victim on which gender can do it better than then, we are going to lose it as a people. Men don't have ego. These are stereotypes that we have grown up 
to believe. Not every man is the same. Not every woman is the same. Let's not fix this on women alone. Everybody, whether man or a woman, can lead. That's amazing. Let me hear, let us hear from Anushka. Anushka, what do you have to say? Does gender really matter? My opinion is clear. Um, gender doesn't matter in leadership, for sure. Women are fit to do anything they want to do in life. Now, I wanted to respond to Messeline. I just wanted to tell her um, she's a very strong lady. I want to applaud her courage, being a single mom of two, having a child at the age of 18. It's something that is really not easy. But one thing I wanted to say is, uh, she should not take it to uh, the family, as it was earlier said. That is a situation that was, I don't know if it was imposed by life or something or circumstances, but it doesn't have anything to do with leadership. That is something that I'm sure if she had any way other than that, she would have taken, she would have chosen not to be a single mom. So it's something that occurred. She had to take it up. Um, it didn't actually depend on her own will. So that has nothing to do with the leadership we are talking about now. I think so. Thank you so much. But no rats does gender really matter in leadership. Hi everyone. Um, thank you for the opportunity as well. Um, gender does not really, does not actually, not even really. Gender does not matter in any way in leadership. And so, um, it was a very interesting debate. And I just had a point. Um, there's an example that kept on coming a lot that has to do with um the physicality of men and women. I just wanted to say that men do not have a good physique to do construction work or whatever work they're, they're, they're told to do. Most men are just muscular and that doesn't mean that they are strong and they can do construction. As other people have said that nowadays, even women are, um, are involved in construction and they can do construction or whatever. So um, I, I just want to urge everyone that we need to get off this mindset that there's, there are some things that can be done with, by men and there's some things that can be done with women. We need to get off the mindset completely. Don't even talk about, don't even preach it because it is only if we ourselves get off that mindset, we will be able to help in removing biasness that is there in employment in, um, yeah, in, when guys are like um, going for employment opportunities. So please let us be off that mindset completely. Yeah, men and women can do whatever uh, they, uh, they want to do, including the uh, leadership uh, opportunities. So um, no one is really born to do anything. Thank you. I'm, I'm first going to read a comment from Margaret Maucha. In my opinion, gender doesn't matter in leadership. When thinking about what I find to be the core attributes of a leader, stuff like honesty, commitment, emotional intelligence, and listening skills, etc. That's what really matters to her. So thank you very much for your opinion. Thank you for your views. Thank you for your perspective. We are going to get to a poll. You will vote. Are you on the side of proposers? Are you on the side of the opposers? But just before we go there, someone really wants to speak. Karanja, check the stage. Does gender matter to be that? Hello, Esther. Thank you for the opportunity to speak on the I think it boils down the question of gender matter in leadership. 
boils down almost to the fact that are leaders born or are they made? Because, and if you choose to say they are made, then you're molded by the circumstances. But beyond that, um, to go back to where um, the debate was about the roles of whether male or female, you have to have grown up in a, in an environment where as a child, you are able to either see leaders such as CAS, Nadia, be able to be um, capable leaders or be able to see, say, strong feminine figures in your family in order to say, believe in the capabilities because it goes beyond um, you going for the opportunities. You have to also be um, mentally equipped where you believe it is capable because that's half the fight. If you're told for so long it cannot be done and it's not um, represented in say the images, the books you read, um, the content you consume basically, um, even at home with regards to roles where you're told um, the your brother is told to be learned to take charge in doing certain tasks and you are delegated to being a sort of a helper. Um, that Those are small things that we can break down in our home setting. Um, in an organizational setting, other, um, other people have spoken on it where, as uh, the previous speaker said, we believe that, we change the belief that certain jobs are not for males. Um, if we are to believe that leaders are born, um, in that sense, we, we might be closing ourselves off but even then, when they are born, we need to tell them. Like if you see um, leadership qualities from a very young age, we nurture those skills instead of what is what usually happens to most females where they are told um, it's you are being too forward or you're being quote unquote aggressive. Things that So to say, um, the other point is to say that this whole debate of whether leaders, whether gender matters in leadership, um, it should not to female leaders. There are male leaders who are nowadays calling themselves he for she, where it's a male leader who is there to be a proponent of um, of the female counterparts without by either a uplifting so that this, in this journey it doesn't become a counterproductive journey of he against hers even though numbers wise we would be best placed because we have more numbers than they do all females are on board with this so other than getting other groups we need to also include male our male they are more he for she. Thank you. Thank you very much for your beautiful one. That was really amazing. So now let's get to the of voting. Do you think proposals have it? Do you think the proposals have it? Click on the link that's appearing on your screen to vote. And remember, your voice matters. So uh, as we vote, please message. As we vote, let me find with your chat. Continue chat. If you still have a point that you think this must be had, continue chat and vote. We have virtual alternative. Put a woman in want to see her in position. Because you have to be a fellow woman. You can of the society. Who can uplift human rights and promote general well-being of the society? Gender does not matter. We have Margaret Maucha. In my opinion, gender doesn't matter in leadership. When thinking about what I find to be the core attributes of a leader, stuff like honesty, commitments are of importance. 
We have Maclean, of course. But again, let's look at it not only in the job industry, but also in the family. The reason I'm saying this is if we as women feel like what a man can do, I can do better, we can carry this mentality to our home. A man feels like his position of presence isn't required. And this has destroyed many homes. Esther Zambi is telling us both men and female should stand equal ground in terms of leadership. Gender myths or cultures that perceive women as less dominant and should be buried. According to statistics, it's been 80 years trying to figure out whether or not gender matters. We honestly need a revolution. Uh, we had a uh, Christine Wangui, and before I read Christine Wangui's comments, are you people voting? Are you people voting? Let's keep on voting. Let's keep on voting. We only have two minutes to, to, to vote, and after that, I'll be giving you the results. Do the opposers or do the proposers have it? The vote matters. Uh, we have Christine Wangoi responding to Sharon Adena, and she's saying this. When, uh, when women are given a chance to do the same thing, they always ensure that they do it perfectly to succeed. Okay, Sharon Adema said, we, we actually, we have seen women given the opportunity of men, and they do better than men. Remember, we have less than two minutes to keep on voting. We are less than two minutes to keep on voting. Make sure that your vote matters. Are you an opposer? Are you a proposer? Take aside. Let's see where you are. We have Claire Wanjiru. We are equal. Gender does not matter in leadership. We have Maclean, of course. I think you just have a fixed mind on this note that we are. For me, gender doesn't matter. Are you people voting? I'm still reminding you to vote. Remember, I'm going to announce the results in a few. Like in one minute's time, you people will be going to have results. Who has it? Are they the opposers? Are they the proposers? We have um, Christine Wang, Susan Wanjiru. In fact, women are more superior than men. That's her sex. Oh, I, I'm not sure if she has voted. Margaret Mauta, yes, she has voted. Sophie Wanda, she has voted. If you have voted, tell us I have voted. We need to see your vote was represented. The theme for Wachana Africa Summit 2021 is the voice. And today, being day one, our sub theme is the truth about girl leadership. Your voice matters. That's what I'm telling you. Without voting, you won't know. Maggie and Jiru, I have voted. Wonderful. Maclean, of course, voted. Rachel Zare voted. Stella Kusamba, gender matters, voted. Uh, Nana Kasim, voted. We have Esther Zambi, voted. Susan Wanjik, voted. Who has not voted? Who has not voted? Let's vote, let's vote. Bella Naomi, I have voted. Wonderful, Dustin, I have voted. Murak, voted. Mm, tell us, Amber, please tell us, why do you think gender matters? Just touch them, touch them on the comment section, someone is asking you. Susan Lankisa, she has voted. Alicia Mora has voted. I'm now close to giving you the results. I'm now close to giving you the results. I'm now close to giving you the results. And guess what? The results are out. The opposers have it. Gender does not matter in leadership. So what do I really want to say from my side? 
great leadership is genderless. It takes hard work, it takes effort, it takes focus and relentless development of yourself to really lead. So gender does not matter in leadership. Thank you very much. Honestly, that was a wonderful debate. I have been able to get different views from you girls. Some of us not even aware of, but then the way you're sharing them, they just came to me like, wow, you have great stuff here listening to us. Thank you very much. We are taking a 10-minute health break. Go to the restroom, get a snack. Having a voice is important. Young girls in the community tell me to use my voice to stand up for myself. My ideas can be tabled by uh, expressing how I feel. It helps you gain courage, get in a safe space to feel free to express how they feel, where they can openly air out their opinions without fear of judgment or contradiction. Because I have the information and I have the power, then I can fight for what belongs to me. And also to fill the own the world by by owning their own voices because it will solve a lot. I would like to invite you to the West Chanawa Africa Summit, which will be held on December eighth to tenth. You don't want to miss out. Young girls in my community inspire me to use my voice to stand up for myself. My ideas can be tabled by uh, expressing how I feel. It helps you gain courage, get in a safe space, to feel free to express how they feel, where they can openly air out their opinions without fear of judgment or contradiction. Because I have the information and I have the power, then I can fight for what belongs to me and also to fill the, own, the world by, by owning their own voices because it will solve a lot. I would like to invite you to the West Chanawa Africa Summit, which will be happening on December 8th to 10th. You don't want to miss out. Young girls in my community inspire me to use my voice to stand up for myself. My ideas can be tabled by uh, expressing how I feel. It helps you gain courage, get in a safe space, to feel free to express how they feel, where they can openly air their opinion of judgment or contradiction. Because I have the information and I have the power, then I can fight for what belongs to me and also to fill the, own, the world by, by owning their own voices because it will solve a lot. I would like to invite you to the West Chanawa Africa Summit, which will be on December 8th to 10th. You don't want to miss out.
having a voice is important. Young girls in my community inspire me to use my voice to stand up for myself. My ideas can be tabled. We are expressing our faith. Safe space to free to express what they feel, where they can openly air out their opinions without fear of judgment or competition. Because I have the information and I have the power, then I can fight for what belongs to me. And also to fill the own the world by by owning their own voices because it will solve a lot. I would like to invite you to the West Chanawa Africa Summit, which will be happening on December eighth to tenth. You don't want to miss out. Having a voice is important. Young girls in my community inspire me to use my voice to stand up for myself. My ideas can be tabled by uh, expressing how I feel. It helps you gain courage, creating a safe space to feel free to express how they feel, where they can openly air out their opinions without fear of judgment or contradiction. Because I have the information and I have the power, then I can fight for what belongs to me. And also to fill the own the world by by only their own voices because it will solve a lot. I would like to invite you to the West China Africa Summit, which will be happening on December eighth to tenth. You don't want to miss out.
participants to this session. I already feel your friends, okay, online friends for this matter. <laughs> Welcome back. What have you done during your health break? First of all, you and water. What have you done? What have you done? So we're going to Chinyambuyu session. Chinyambuyu session is a grand moderated panel discussion where they share their life experiences, their shared everything they're just going to share. And then in our today's Chinyambuyu session, we have we are listening to a podcast on the role of collective girl network in exercising the power of voice and supporting Sondia. I'm going to invite all of you, let us listen in, let us know what they have to say. And as they share, if anything stands out for you, like, honestly, I have to pick this. Start us, start us, tell us, this is what has stood out for me. Welcome, let's listen in. Okay, I've heard of stretch marks, but I've never heard of this type. You know, you can't see my stomach. You're just in stretch marks. There's no, there's no stomach skin. Make sure you never miss a show. Follow us wherever you find your podcast. Okay, I've heard of stretch marks. Hello, my name is Maria Madabo. I am a mentor at Starfish International, and I am finally a law student at the University of the Gambia. And, and with me are my three staff students, our youth leaders, the voices of the staff students who are here with me in the platform to talk about the role of collective girl networks in exercising the power of voice and supporting social and emotional well-being. With introductions, can you tell us who you are as girls? I am 15 years old. I have been a staff student for eight years now. Hello, my name is Halima Jabad. I'm 14 years old and I have been a established student for seven years now. Hello, uh, my name is Adam Osuso. I have been in Starfish for eight to nine years now and I'm 15 years old. All right, welcome ladies on the platform. Um, we are going to talk about intentional collective networks, which is all very, very important to us at Starfish because we partner with a lot of girl organizations who we work closely with to uplift the well-being of girls, especially when it comes to their social and emotional well-being. But I want to start by asking you guys what your affirmations are. Because as youth leaders, it's important to have a daily affirmation that you live by. What would you say your affirmations are? So uh, for me, I always like to tell myself that I am beautiful because I live in a society that they like to like discriminate people because of their size, bully people because of their appearance or other stuff. So I like to wake up and tell myself that I am beautiful just the way I am. Well, that is very important. I think all over the world, there is a problem of beauty and beauty is a controversial issue. And so I'm glad you have an affirmation that is uplifting you when it comes to the way you look. Okay, so my daily affirmation is I am enough and I won't change myself for anyone and I am perfectly okay with it. Okay. Nice. So my daily affirmation is be happy, be sane and be real and also be positive. And why? Because um, this year there has been a lot of uh, mental health issues, especially when after COVID, for some people that lost their families and all of that. And so I decided that for this year, this is going to be me. And then I'm going to have a group of girls that I'm going to work with when it comes to mental health. Wow, amazing. Well, personally, for me, I think um, individual effort is good, but collective network is better. Mm -hmm. And um, we need a team of nation builders. We need a team of change agents to come together and support each other. So what would you say collective network means to you as girls? Okay, so I'll go first. So to me, collective network to me will mean um, a group of people or, or girls around the world that I can work with, even not through like us seeing them or knowing them personally, but like for example, the SI Canada, who we have been able to exchange videos with and our ideas, because as they say, two heads are than one. Mm -hmm. So I would say it's like a platform for me to interact with other girls around the world who have been making an impact in the world. Yes. Nice. So um, um, collective girl networks are very important in order for us to be able to learn and share ideas and also be able to support each other in ways that we can. So um, basically, 
basically this collective girl networks when combined that can make a huge impact because girls from all different type parts of the world want to be listened to want their stories to be heard and want to be able to express themselves right so the freedom of expression within girls is possible when it, when we network when we come together as one people stella what will you say so what i will call a collective girl network will be a place where you know you can share your problems be comfortable and know that all those girls are there for one another and you guys and you guys are aware of the fact that together you guys can change a lot of stuff that are happening around us like bullying discrimination gender gender equality and like all the social issues yeah, yeah. All yeah. Issues and it's issues very important um, and for me what it will mean to me is um, a, a team of change agents basically a team of nation builders a team of servant leaders coming together from all around the world to make an impact in each other's life and also when it comes to coming up with solutions to the social issues that are affecting them as girls in this community Let's talk about how you are able to exercise your voices as young leaders in this community. How will you say you are able to exercise your voice? Okay. So as a young leader, um I express myself in different ways. I write poetry. Um I recite poetry to um I write a lot of stories, I writing and yes. So for example, if there's in my community, so for example, I have tribalism issues in my community. and then i write a poem about it or i i write a script about it and share it with my girls that i work with and then we act a drama so i have this favorite poem and it's tribalism so that's why i use tribalism as an example and i'll just um recite some few words in it and it goes looking around me i see a nation left with scars that are still broken scars hiding behind the smiles of its people with hearts that are still broken i see streets the way one feel with joy love and humanity now tear apart the chaos rape mother existing unity see it's crazy how fast we've changed peace we've once knew the togetherness we've had in all we reigned we now live in a gambia where politics is based on tribes where everyone looks down on other tribes where you cannot not write on a social media without being insulted or attacked because you're simply from a different nation thank wow. you that, was that is a beautiful piece and i think it just important uh for girls to be able to use the power of their voice because mm-hmm. one of the things i tell myself as a girl and as a mentor especially when i'm dealing with the students is that one of the most powerful tools we have as girls is our voices and our voices can either build us or they can break us but it can also it's powerful enough to uplift other people around us so thank you for sharing that what would you say ladies So I I'll go next. Mm-hmm. So another thing that I think uh well um sorry can help you can as a help girl. us as a girl um with our voices right. I think one is to be independent as a girl. Um because I think you're t- you're trying to teach or de- uh deliver your message to other people out there and help with social issues that are happening around you. So when you're independent enough you will be able to uplift other people and teach them how to be independent on their own how to support themselves how to be themselves and how to support themselves both financially and independent in the way they think like right. to be able to think on their feet mm-hmm. think for themselves and make decisions for themselves right that is very important i'm glad you mentioned independence because for us as staffish as you guys will know um one of your requirements is small business. you guys have to be able to do a small business because when you learn skills that help you to be independent it helps you to be able to exercise all of your voice it help you to make decisions for yourself because as girls in this community you you're not independent you cannot make decisions for yourself but when you're independent when you're mentally independent when you're financially independent it helps you to be able to make decisions for yourself so thank you Stella for sharing that yes i do okay so here uh, in Stafford International Um, I don't know most people know this, but we published a book mm-hmm. where each of us got to write down our own stories mm-hmm. of maybe what is going on in the society or what we want to put out in the world. Mm-hmm. And the book was a success because majority of it sold out. Mm-hmm. So for me, personally, like how uh, Adam Sousa said here is that we can either put it down into writing, poetry, skits, mm-hmm. but also in stuff 
Actually, we have the service project which we do every three months. Mm-hmm. And during the service project, what we do is that we put the we go into our society and we create awareness. So it can be from what we learn from starfish exactly. or what we just want to put out there in the society. Mm-hmm. So like how she's like how they have been saying here, mm-hmm. it's either through um, we can put it down books, skits, or our talent, or we just go out into the society and uh, put that out. Wow, that is very important um, because for us as staffers, service is mm-hmm. one of our main five staffish qualities, exactly. and it's very important. We always say you have to be able to look beyond yourself as a youth leader and to serve your community because really it's not all about you. You are if a good leader is somebody who looks beyond themselves. A good leader is somebody who impacts their community, and that is exactly what our staff students have been doing. Mm-hmm. And the next thing I want to ask about is how collective networking can help you exercise your social and emotional well-being as girls. So I would like to go first on this one. I think that collective girl networks can help a lot when it gets to do with your problems around everything, like your country, your, your society, and everything. So I think these collective um, girl networks, you will be able to share what is happening around your society, the social issues, and you guys can come together as one to come up with solutions to these problems because um, you can't be just alone to fix all these social issues around because they're like too much and one head, like two heads are better than one. So I think that going to do with all of that mm-hmm. um they will be able to be there to support you on every and give you solutions mm-hmm. to be able to fix social issues right so you can definitely um collective goal network can help you exercise the power of your um social issues and emotional well-being mm-hmm. by listening to you and by coming up with so- solutions to the problems um we are all facing so basically coming together as when people are talking about our issues is going to help thank you for mentioning that so my English teacher always says one good head is better than two bad heads and two good heads is better than one. So um, I think listening to our stories, like um, listening to different types of stories, because everyone in this world has a problem. And even though we face it differently and even though it comes to us differently, we still all have a problem that we share and mm-hmm. a common problem that we all share. Mm-hmm. So I think coming together, listening to each other's stories and coming up with possible solutions, um, supporting and inspiring and motivating each other will really go a long way in making an impact. Right. Okay. So the fact that these collective like those network are like all over the world, mm-hmm. it's really great because we, we as much as like if there, like let's say for example there was just one group that it would be hard for different people around the world to have ideas from other people but as there are different like how they have said two heads better than one mm-hmm. we learn from each other we inspire each other and we learn talents and ways of us dealing with problems in our society from each other mm-hmm. so the fact that there are good uh, girl network around the world mm-hmm. is a really great thing right and one of the things we usually say at starfish is that the work we do, especially when it comes to women empowerment, Mm -hmm. um, it's not a competition. It's a collaborative effort. It's a collective effort. People have to come together, collaborate, and cooperate to make this work easier, to impact more girls, to touch a lot of the lives of a lot of girls that are in the world. Because there are lots and lots of girls in the world. And one person cannot do it. One organization cannot do it. That is why we need to come together. And so partnerships are important to us at Starfish. This is why we expose our students to um, summer programs where we invite volunteers from all around the world. And we always, always um, tell our students that they need to be global citizens and they need to be aware of what is happening around the, around the world. And um, for example, when there was the crisis in Afghanistan, we as a Starfish team did videos and also did radio programs to talk about issues that are happening and how we can support our Afghanistan brothers and sisters all around the world. So global citizenship is key and we can support each other by listening to each other, by being there for each other in spirit and also by just coming up with solutions to social issues that are affecting us in all around the world. And so the next question I want to ask is how can other girls who are interested in leadership positions exercise the power of their voices? Okay, so I'll go first. Mm-hmm. Uh, first of all, um, I believe you need 
to be able to build your self-confidence and you also need to be able to build your self-esteem. And then after that, you need to be able um, to learn how to be able to put yourself across um, with the help of Katsi and also be able to influence other people's opinions um, because everybody has opinions, um, but those are different from facts. So you need to be able to be factual and also be able to influence other people's opinions the right way without intimidating them or scaring them. Yeah. So, so I mean, like how we all know, action speaks better than words, right? Mm -hmm. And as a leader, as much as you will want to advise the people that are looking to you, you will also want for you to follow in your footsteps. Mm -hmm. Like for example, the staffish members, mm -hmm. we have seen them go through the program, we have seen them do service projects, mm -hmm. we have seen people all around do service projects, and we get inspired to do that. So as much as we hear from people, them telling us about, or from other young ladies, telling us about like how it is important for us to be service oriented, for us to be us to be out there empowering other girls mm -hmm. us seeing them do it inspires us much more right exactly yeah so and that is why one of our first words in our mode of operation established international is action the ability to just take initiatives you mm -hmm. don't have to wait until you become rich exactly to make the impacts you need to you make mean. in your world mm -hmm. you have to be able to take actions and i like how you put it action speaks louder than voice yeah before you can use your voice as a leader, you need to be able to make the changes. You need to start taking actions and creating impacts and making a difference. That is the question we have to ask ourselves. So I think um, they have said a lot when it comes to that. And what I'm going to add up to what they said is that um, to be a to be voice out there and how to emphasize it there, you need to plan it. You need to be able to emphasize it and know the people you're giving that message to. Mm -hmm. And you need to be self-confident. You need to be strong enough so that those people that you are sharing your message to could look up to you and be like, yes. And then they will be able to feel your message just like the way you want it to be. Right. Okay. So you have to definitely know your target population yes. as a leader. Who are you serving? Mm -hmm. How are you serving, serving them? them. Mm -hmm. And really, is it making impacts? The question of impacts has to always come because you have, you want, as a leader, you want to be able to make impacts. You yeah. want the people you're serving to feel a change in them and in the things you are talking about and the things you are advocating for. Exactly. So that is very important. Um, so we are going to also talk about why it's important for girls to be part of collective networks. So as staffish girls, mm -hmm. why is it important for girls to be part of the collective network? Okay. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> like I've said,